Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Day. <laughs> Lord is already risen. Not today, but 2024 years ago. <laughs> and he's alive. We all can stand. We can, if you want, you can greet the person who's next to you. Just wish them. We can stand and just greet each other. We can, now we can take out our Bibles and we can go to Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 8 onwards. Romans chapter 6, verse 8 onwards. 6, verse 8 onwards. Verse 8 itself is so powerful. Since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with Him. <laughs> when He rose, we also rose with Him. Hallelujah! <laughs> I want to read it again. Since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with Him. Hallelujah! We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and He will never die again. He defeated death sin, Satan once and for all. Hallelujah. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. If death has no power over him, death will have no power over us. Hallelujah. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. And today we will declare that Lord, we will live for your glory. Hallelujah. Because your son lived for your glory. Hallelujah. Verse 10, again I want to read. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We can just thank God. We can just praise him. Because... You know, when he rose, we also rose with him. Hallelujah. We can just thank him for he has given us victory over the sin, Satan and death. Why don't you stand? Why don't you close your eyes? Why don't you just bless his holy name and thank him? Hallelujah. This is a perfect day to remind ourselves what he has done on the cross. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. You tasted death on our behalf, hallelujah. All the weight of our sin was upon your shoulders on that cross, Lord. We are so thankful. We remind ourselves today that you took our sins, hallelujah. You tasted our death. And thank you, Lord. You defeated sin, Satan and death for our behalf, hallelujah. And now you are alive, hallelujah, Lord. And because you live, we will also live, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Now, because of your work on the cross, Lord, thank you that no power of sin can reign in our lives, Lord, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that no longer Satan is our master, hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, one day, Lord, we will also get the glorious bodies, and we will see you face to face, Lord. Hallelujah. And today, Lord, we want to see you with the eyes of our heart. Hallelujah. Lord, come and dwell in this place, Lord. Fill, hallelujah, this place. You have said, Lord, you have promised that wherever two or three gather in my name, I will be there. Hallelujah. Lord, we cry out to you. We call upon your name. Your word says, those who seek me will find me, Lord. Today we seek you this morning and we seek you with our whole heart, hallelujah, Lord. Come the way you want to, Lord, hallelujah. We are open, our hearts, our minds, Lord. Our bodies we give to you, Lord, hallelujah, today. And 
i really encourages me like when i, I even when on the good friday also rashmi also shared that the vision god showed her and it really spoke to me that lord told her that my beautiful picture is given jesus died on the cross it pleased my heart what my son has done hallelujah father our, our heavenly father boast on what your son has done hallelujah that's why he is after all the enemies hallelujah of his son and he will make sure that he will put all the enemies of his son to the feet of his son hallelujah heavenly father you are a good good father hallelujah how amazing you three are lord jesus our father and holy spirit you are amazing hallelujah come and fill us hallelujah we so thank you lord for you are the one who are in our lives hallelujah you are the one who has promised that i will never leave you nor forsake you you are the one who carry our burden each day lord hallelujah and i know today you also gonna carry us lord hallelujah lord we thank you hallelujah wonderful savior thank you for your nail pierced and thank you for your sight was open for our behalf thank you lord jesus hallelujah and thank you you were you stayed quiet when they were beating you accusing you for our behalf lord i bless you i thank you there is no one like you jesus jesus there is no one like you we adore you we worship you wonderful savior come on church open your mouth just talk to him just bless his holy name hallelujah 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 you are a shield and you are our greatest reward lord hallelujah oh wonderful savior oh wonderful savior we hide under the shadow of your wings you are our hiding place hallelujah in your presence we find rest lord in your presence we live hallelujah wonderful savior wonderful savior come on church open your mouth open your mouth you want to lift your hands you can lift your hands you have full freedom to bless him you have full freedom to talk to him because he is looking to you he is looking to me today this morning give your heart affections to him thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus hallelujah our focus is is so much important hallelujah to the lord hallelujah it was moses who who gave his focus to the burning bush that is why he found this amazing father this amazing lord and lord today help us to give our all our attentions to you lord hallelujah because we want to meet you hallelujah like moses met you the burning bush hallelujah you're the same god hallelujah lord and help us to give our full attention to you this morning hallelujah you are the one we adore hallelujah you are the one you are the one you are the one
trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say
for his strength for his power just thank him hallelujah we bless you lord we bless you we thank you thank you lord that we are not called to live by our own strength thank you lord we are called to live by your strength your grace hallelujah lord we thank you for your grace and today lord whatever hinders us to drink from your fountain lord hallelujah we rebuke it we reject it hallelujah we reject every worry we reject every anxiety we reject every accusation we reject every sickness lord because you are our hiding place saba lord there is deliverance in your presence lord lord who 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 have as the lord pain in his left leg lord i pray that touch him and heal this person i speak your healing of the cross for that leg in jesus mighty name hallelujah Our Father, thank you. Whenever you come, Lord, there, there are chains always breaks. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We bless you. We bless you, wonderful Savior. We bless you. Today, Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. because you are the victorious king sing hallelujah sing hallelujah sing hallelujah to the
in your mercy and your loving kindness lord hallelujah lord thank you when we were not looking for you you came for us you searched us lord you found us and you carried us on your shoulders hallelujah we thank you jesus we bless your holy name we bless your holy name lord hallelujah there is no one like you lord hallelujah lord today this day lord when we when we remember lord what you have done help us to lord hallelujah cling to you lord hallelujah if there is anybody lord who is backslided lord from this amazing relationship with you lord today carry that person lord hallelujah lord Lord I pray Lord hallelujah Lord if there is anybody who is tormented in his flesh I speak the name of Jesus over your body hallelujah I speak your the name of Jesus hallelujah I supply the blood of Jesus hallelujah especially Lord touch that neck portion Lord the chest portion hallelujah wonderful savior wonderful savior touch your people today we find healing under your wings Lord we come We come under your wings, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch us, heal us today, Lord. Deliver us today, Lord. Hallelujah. Apply your blood over each and every one here, Lord. Cover us under your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for your precious blood. Hallelujah. You shed for us, for our sins. Hallelujah. Your body broken for our healing. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. 
we bless you speak to us today through your word lord in jesus mighty name i pray amen please be seated welcome to the uh, resurrection sunday service some people call it easter we prefer to call it uh, resurrection sunday service and for us we celebrate not just today but every day the life and the death and the resurrection and the ascension of our lord jesus christ hallelujah as a church family also we have the uh, holy communion together and that's also a day we so much celebrate the finished work of the cross hallelujah but yes okay it's a, it's it's also a good uh, season where with purpose and intent we think about the life the death the resurrection and the ascension of our lord and you do uh, if you are uh, listening closely you can ga- catch certain important precious things in this time too hallelujah so uh, uh, welcome uh, those who are here for the first time can you raise your hand want to welcome you anyone here for the first time okay thank you good to have you here and uh, the ushers are going to give you uh, newcomer cards to fill please uh, kindly fill them and before you leave you can please pass it to the ushers okay and uh, what's at the back and as you exit this door here you'll see the washrooms yeah okay so i want to request my father to share a short exhortation please uh, good morning to you all and happy easter to you all <laughs> also <laughs> and uh, so suresh just display matthew 27 matthew 27 verses 57 to 61 57 to 61 as i will just read from my bible as evening approached there came a rich man from arimathea named joseph who had himself become a disciple of jesus going to pilate he asked for jesus body and pilate ordered that it be given to him joseph took the body wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock he rolled a big stone uh, in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away mary magdalene and the other mary were sitting there opposite the tomb and then uh, matthew 28 verses 1 to 3 and uh, just I just read from the bible after the sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week mary magdalene and the other mary went to the look to the tomb there was a violent earthquake for an angel of the lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men the angel said to the woman don't be afraid for i know that you are looking for jesus who has crucified please note uh, verse, verse 6 uh, he is not here he has risen just as he said come and see the place where he lay then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into galilee there you will see him now i have told you so the woman hurried from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy and uh, ran to please note filled with joy suddenly jesus met them greetings he said they came to him clasped his feet and worshiped him then jesus said to them don't be afraid go and tell my brothers go to galilee there they will see me and then uh, verses uh, uh, 16 onwards 
verses verses 16 the same chapter then then the 11 disciples went to galilee to the mountain where jesus had told them to go when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and uh, teaching them to obey everything i have commanded and uh, surely i am with you always to the very end of the age if we look closely to this portion then uh, we see that uh, our god is a god of uh, love and he is also a god of justice the price of every sin is death either i have to die or some sinless man was to die in my place to meet the requirement of god so jesus it was a plan of god and uh, that was a plan of redemption so jesus uh, took on him as per the plan of the father the sins of the entire world he was sinless but the sins of the entire world were put on him and then he was crushed so that we have life and more abundant life in god and uh, a very heavy price stands paid for our freedom from uh, sin satan and death we have to remember that the, the price was not gold and silver the price uh, that was required uh, the justice to meet the sin problem was the, the sinless blood that was only in jesus and uh, so i also praise god that he made a way for me to visit israel and uh, also visit the empty tomb there and uh, now at around that tomb beautiful garden uh, has been created and it is a tourist spot no doubt the death is a gloomy picture but here we see that this death was for a purpose and uh, that's why we are celebrating this and uh, um, uh, a man of god sapurjan commenting on on this uh, easter sunday service uh, uh, he said that the tomb of jesus is death place of of death itself death of sin and satan itself victory of jesus over sin satan and death fear not to enter that tomb step in there to taste sweet holy fragrance left by the blessed body of jesus death could not contain him as he was sinless we are to thank god for jesus our redeemer birth of jesus is a significant event death of jesus is also a very significant event the time ad and bc we still see uh, reminders of him and uh, he came for a for a purpose he lived only for 33 years and uh, did the work uh, uh, during that period of time only 3 years means 3 years ministry and uh, we see that by uh, bible records that he went about doing good healing all who were oppressed of the devil and then he died and he was buried then he rose from the dead ascended high and now he is sitting at the right of right hand of god to intercede for us precious people of god we are indebted and uh, we should always uh, thank god for jesus christ who died for us someone can think of dying for a right righteous man but he died for us the sinners So may God bless you all.
I preach, I want to take you to uh, John and uh, John chapter 20. Please. And let's just pray before we get started here. Heavenly Father, please, uh, we acknowledge your unfailing love, we acknowledge your covenant giving faithfulness, we acknowledge, Lord, that because of the success of the cross of Calvary, we have this abundant salvation as a gift and we are so grateful. Lord, open our eyes to see wonderful things from your word. We ask and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So John 20 will be the focus of uh, my preaching today. So it says, uh, now the, the setting is that Lord Jesus has been crucified and Mary wants to come and she wants to anoint the body with uh, certain material as an honor. And uh, now she couldn't come on the next day because the next day was Sabbath. So Friday Jesus was crucified, next day Sabbath, she can't come on the Sabbath. So she's coming on Sunday, which is the first day of the week. And it is the third day since Jesus died. Yeah. So it says on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark. And she saw the stone had already been taken away from the tomb. Now, that's surprising for her that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and she came to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So she was in trouble and she went back to where the disciples were staying and she especially told Peter and this disciple Jesus loved that hey, there seems to be some issue here. Uh, someone has taken away the body of the Lord and we do not know where they have laid him now. So Peter and the other disciple went forth and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together. And the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stopping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came following him and entered the tomb and he saw the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth, which had been on the head, not lying the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the dead body, it, there was a separate head covering for the dead body. Now this separate head covering has been rolled and kept neatly. So there has not been any evidence of disturbance there or someone having uh, dismantled something or some disturbance that evidence is not there because the head covering is very neatly packed and kept. Yes. So Peter is noticing all this. He is seeing the face cloth which had been on his head not lying with the linen wrappings but was rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb then also entered and saw and believed. For as yet they do not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their own houses. Now, so we have, we have been told about the other disciple, the disciple Jesus loved, that he believed. Seeing the linen wrappings, seeing the head cloth and seeing that it has been neatly kept. He believed that the Lord has risen. Yeah. But Mary is still very distraught. She is not able to make any sense out of this. She is very distraught. Okay. And we are not also told much about how Peter is perceiving this whole situation. Okay. So, so Peter and John have gone back to their own home, but Mary is still there and she is, she is in grief, she is in pain and she is distraught. And Mary is standing still outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she stopped and looked into the tomb and now she sees two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? So the angels are asking this lady is weeping, why are you weeping? Yeah. And she said, because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Even the possibility of the resurrection doesn't cross the mind of Mary Magdalene this time. She's very pained that someone has 
come and take away the body of Lord Jesus. And she is not getting the opportunity to serve the body, to put the spices and to honor the dead body of Jesus. She loved the Lord and she wanted to honor his dead body. And she had not got the opportunity the day of his crucifixion. But we know that Joseph and we know that Nicodemus, they had honored the body of Jesus in their own way. So she is very upset that I am not getting the opportunity. Yeah. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping and whom are you seeking? She is not able to recognize the resurrected Jesus. And she thought this must have been the caretaker of the garden. And the Lord is asking her, why are you weeping and whom are you seeking? Yeah. So precious ones, it's a good question to ask if today you are weeping, why are you weeping and, and shouldn't you be seeking the one who can wipe your tears? Hallelujah. There is, a, there is one we can seek who wipes away our tears. Hallelujah. Suppose him to the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, even the conversation going on, she is not able to recognize it's the Lord. But when the Lord says affectionately her name, Mary, she recognizes this is the Lord. Hallelujah. Immediately she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Reboni. Now she has recognized. Just when the Lord affectionately called out her name, she recognizes this is the Lord. Hallelujah. And she turns to him and says, Reboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I sent my Father and your Father and my God and your God. And so the Lord is telling him, don't touch me. I still not ascended. But he's saying, you now be now the witness of what you have seen. And go tell. And it's the first time he's calling them my brothers. Yes. All who put their faith in Jesus become the household of God. Hallelujah. So go tell my, go tell my brothers. And Mary came and she announced to the disciples and said, I have seen the Lord and that he has said these things. Now this is very interesting because if this was a made up story, then this is the most foolish thing to do. And people who make up conspiracy theories are not foolish. They put a lot of thought. A right wing people who are doing a lot of conspiracy theories, they put a lot of thought when they put conspiracy theories. Yes. If this was a conspiracy, this was the most foolish thing to do. Because the testimony of a woman had no value at that time. And here the Lord is showing herself first to a woman. Yes? And, and in the court in those days, a woman's testimony had no value. So if this was a conspiracy, it was the most foolish thing to do. Yes? And I think people make conspiracies much smarter than that. Because they make conspiracies to make you believe. Yes? But here the Lord, because the Lord is a confident of who He is, he goes and shows himself to women first. And I believe that should be such encouragement to women, especially in a country like ours, where we see that women are in many ways suppressed by the whole patriarchal mindset that we have. Yes. The Lord comes in and shows himself to a woman, knowing fully well that a woman's testimony has no value in a, in a, in a court. But you see, when has the Lord bothered about uh, the approval of anybody? Yes. He moves in a sovereign way. And I believe the Lord does everything strategically. There's a reason he shows himself the first witness. The first person who saw the resurrected Jesus is a woman. And I believe there's a reason to that. I believe that the Lord has always wanted left of the one who is beaten down and crushed and sidelined and marginalized. Yes. Hallelujah. And so, and you know, but these guys, they haven't taken her very seriously either. Because you see, after this, we'll get through. They are meeting secretly because they're so afraid of the Jews. If they had believed her testimony, there would have been a newfound boldness, yes? yes? But even they are not taking her seriously. Forget about anybody else. Even these disciples are not taking this woman's testimony seriously. So she has told them. Now it's evening now. They've had the whole day to process. They're still not convinced. And we are told that fearful of the Jews, they are hiding and meeting in a room. So that means... Mary's testimony hasn't really affected them much. It should have, yes. Perhaps if it came from Peter or John, it would have made all the difference. You see. 
So when it was evening the same day, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were for the fear of the Jews, they've heard a witness from Mary that Jesus has risen. Still we are told that they were so scared of the Jewish people that they are hiding and meeting in a room. Yes? And so they're fearful, they're full of doubt, they are distraught. And look at this, the Lord just appears. It says, the Lord came and stood in the midst and said, peace with you. He's not coming to any door. He's just appears in the middle of the room. Right now, if you just, just don't appear in the midst of this room, many would freak out also, right? Who knows who will freak out, who will worship. <laughs> it's a complex issue, right? And then he's saying, don't be afraid, peace with you. And someone's going to be like, seeing you like this is making you fearful also. But you see, it was a very, very precious thing to say to them at that time because they were anyway full of fear. They were discouraged. They were full of doubt. And it's amazing, the first thing the Lord says to them is what? Peace be with you. Because that's what they needed so much to hear. Hallelujah. You don't need to remain in fear and conflict and chaos. Hallelujah. And what's also amazing is this shows that Jesus is unstoppable. Yes. He can reach anywhere without anyone's permission. Yes. But he's a gentle person. But he can reach anywhere. That means he can also reach the most broken places of your and my personhood and our being. Hallelujah. And that is important and precious. Yes. yes. You know, many times as a pastor, when I have spoken to people, sometimes I, f I have felt so inadequate to help that person. I've just prayed and said, Lord, you need to touch the broken places of this person's life. I can't reach where you can reach and you need to reach and you can reach and I can't reach. Hallelujah. Amen. This person is so broken. There's nothing much I can do here. But it's awesome. And you now touch them deep inside where I can never reach and make them whole. Hallelujah. And God does it. Because who can stop the Lord from penetrating the deepest recess of our personhood? Hallelujah. And making us whole. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He can reach where no one else can reach and touch us. Hallelujah. He can put us back together like no one else can. In Hebrews, we are told that this Jesus saves us to the uttermost. That's a very interesting phrase. This Jesus saves us to the? Not just a little bit on the periphery. Not just superficially saves us. It says, He saves us to the uttermost. Hallelujah. How amazing. So it doesn't matter what trauma you've been through in your life, it doesn't matter what we've been broken. Call on the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. He is the one who can reach where none of us can reach and He can heal you and restore you and make you whole. Hallelujah. And we have seen our own lives and we have heard multiple testimonies of the Lord putting people together where doctors said this person can never be put back together. Yes? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the person with the legion of demons? God put this person back together by first removing the demons and making this person sane. Hallelujah. What is difficult for the Lord? You know, and even the legion of demons could not stop this person from coming to Jesus and getting deliverance. Hallelujah. Who can stop this unstoppable Lord Jesus? Hallelujah. This is peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. His hands, the nail pierced hands and the side where a spear had pierced him. And then again, after showing him his nail pierced hands and his side, again he's saying to them, peace be with you. What's the point? He's showing them that look at my hands, the nail pierced hands, look at my side. I have paid for your sins on that cross. Hallelujah. Now peace with God, peace with the peace with God is a portion, not hostility. Hallelujah. He's saying, look, this is a demonstration. My nail pierced hands and my side is, is, let it be a demonstration for you. Let it convince you once and for all. I have paid the price for your sins. I have taken the punishment due for you for your sins. 
And because you put a faith in me, you have forgiveness for your sins now. The hostility between me, between you and the Father, I have removed it out of the way. Because the hostility is because of sin and I have dealt with it. Hallelujah. Look at my hands. Look at my side. Be rest assured now your peace with the Father. Hallelujah. And peace with God opens up the peace of God. Yes. Romans chapter 5, what does it say? Justified by our faith, we have peace with God. Hallelujah. Romans 5, 1. What does it say? Justified by faith, we have peace with God. Justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus has taken our sins on his body and also the punishment for our sins. So God's justice is met now. And those who will put their faith in this Jesus, what happens? Can we, yeah, it will be good to silence our phones, please. Thank you. Those who put their faith in Lord Jesus, they don't have to be punished for their sins now. The Lord Jesus has already taken punishment for you and me on that cross. Hallelujah. And so by showing his hands, nail pierced hands, showing his side that had been speared, the Lord is telling them, look, look at this evidence. Be rest assured. I have done the work for which I have come. And you have put your faith in me and your sins are forgiven. And you are justified in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Now there is peace between the Father and you, not hostility. The wrath of God is not your portion now. Hallelujah. And so now this... This peace is their portion. And he's again again reminding them, peace with you, peace be with you. And he's saying, look, I've made it happen. Now this peace is your portion. Hallelujah. Shalom now is your portion. All manner of holiness and blessing is your portion. Not the wrath of God. Yes, hallelujah. And then he's saying, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. So he's saying, guys, I have saved you now. I have saved you onto a purpose. Yes. See, when we meet with the Lord Jesus, it's not just that now I've met with him. Now that Jesus is going to help me with my dreams and my goals. Yeah. Now I have extra superpower on my side. I'll fulfill all my dreams now. No, that's not why he saved us. He has saved us now that we are going to now fulfill his, his commission, his mission. Yes. We are and basically saying, you know, you guys have to carry forward my mission and with the help of the Holy Spirit, it's coming. The Holy Spirit is coming. Co-mission. You now have been saved to get involved with a purpose, my mission. Yes. You carry forward the mission of Jesus now on earth. Yes. Hallelujah. And I. So you're saying... And now, as the Father, now he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. I send you. Matthew 28, he tells them, go and do what? Go and make? Disciples. Disciples. Why? First he says, all authority has been given to me. So now go and make? Disciples. Of all nations. Teaching them and baptizing them in the Father and Holy Spirit. So there is something that we have been asked to do. We are told that in, by Apostle Paul that we are ambassadors of the message of reconciliation. So we are supposed to carry a message, those who met with Jesus, and we are supposed to represent heaven well and we are supposed to give this message to people who don't know Jesus. That look, I have been reconciled to God by the death of Jesus on the cross. Now, likewise, you can also be reconciled to this God by putting your faith in what Jesus has done on the cross. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to appeal to people and say, I have been reconciled with God. I'm not a child of wrath, but I'm a child now of mercy. I have peace with God. You can also be reconciled to God and have shalom and have eternal life. Hallelujah. So you say, there is a work that now you have to do. I'm sending you. The Father sent me, now I send you. Hallelujah. And then he's also saying, hey, of course, you can't do it in your own strength. Yes. So, so straight away then he says, and when he had said this, Peace be with you, as the Father sent me, I am sending you. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So clearly, this being effective witness of the gospel, being effective witness of the life of Jesus, we need the Holy Spirit. Sir. Hallelujah. We can't be effective in witnessing, effective in witness about the cross, 
we find the witnesses of the life of God without the Holy Spirit itself. Hallelujah. So he is, he is now, he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And likewise, if you remember in Acts chapter 1, again, you will capture the similar thought that we need power, empowering of the Holy Spirit if we are going to be effective in the purpose, the mission of God. So, Acts chapter 1. Okay. So it says in Acts chapter 1, Luke is saying here, this first account I composed Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Now look at this. The first account I come with Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to, to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his sufferings by many convincing proofs, appeared to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait what the Father had promised. And he said, You heard of me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And not minutes from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, Lord, is it at this time you restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times and epochs, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. Look at verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then what will happen? Then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even the remotest part of the earth. So, when the Lord Jesus is giving the mission, giving the purpose, He is also giving them the empowerment to do this well. Hallelujah. Even in Acts, he's, even in Acts you clearly see this, that when it is only when you will receive power when? When the Holy Spirit is upon you. And then that Holy Spirit, He is the one who will help you to be effective witness. He will empower you to be effective witness of me and my life. Hallelujah. So, going back to the story in John, what's interesting is that, look at, look at how focused the Lord is, yeah. He's appearing to them, yeah, Sandeep, uh, thought of, there's a lot of sound there, tell them to listen sensitively. So, so here in John 20, So John 20, we are seeing that how in a, in a very short time he has, look at his focus. First, he is talking to them about the fact that, hey, peace is your portion. Don't yield to the fear, don't yield to confusion, don't yield to chaos. There is peace because I have won the victory on the cross for you. Hallelujah. Second is saying, now print this peace and he is saying, look, there is a purpose that I have for you. And this purpose I am not sending you to do it in the willpower, I am sending you and you breathe the Holy Spirit on them, in the empowering the Holy Spirit. So, he is saying you need power, you can operate in weakness to be my witnesses. Third, he is saying I don't want you to be people, discouraged, loitering around aimlessly. Yes? So many believers, we are aimlessly loitering around and not being useful to the world. And a lot of it is because of discouragement, fear, doubt, does God love me? Has he really done what the Bible claims that he has done? So, look at how focused the Lord is. First, he is putting him to rest and saying, peace is your portion. You have been justified. Wrath of God is not a portion. Hallelujah. Then he is saying to them, look, don't now aimlessly live your life. I know you are discouraged. I know you are full of fear. But first of all, now peace is your portion. And don't waste your life aimlessly. There is a purpose. Like the Father sent me, I am sending you. Your life must be purposeful. 
and you cannot fulfill my purpose in your own strength so here yeah, holy spirit deep breathe the holy spirit upon them hallelujah so what i find fascinating is that look at in the short few few verses look at how full of purpose the lord is and how much he is helping them and how much we need help isn't it so many times we feel discouraged we feel fearful we start doubting the lord we we get all confused about our own purpose yes and we start living just like the unsaved neighbor isn't it receive the holy spirit and verse 23 if you forgive sins of any their sins have been forgiven and if you retain the sins of any they have been retained now we get pretty confused about this verse but really what what's the point we made the point is this go share the gospel of the kingdom go share the good news of christ if people will receive this message their sins will be forgiven they'll have eternal life if they're going to reject the message of the cross of christ they are going to end up facing judgment yes it's not that we are releasing forgiveness of sin but it is our message that is activating something depend on the response of the listeners hallelujah so our message is important the words that this this gospel is very important so you know we've we've uh, read quotes like um, preach the gospel if necessary use words now that's a wrong statement totally wrong statement because you need words to preach the gospel all your good acts cannot make a person understand the gospel they need to know these good acts are coming because of a christ who died on the cross for you and me hallelujah the gospel needs to be preached and it has words and god backs your mouth with power paul says in one place the message of the cross the message of the cross he says the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but is the power of god onto for those who are being saved hallelujah and he's mentioning about a message what is he saying he's saying when the message of the cross of jesus is proclaimed power is made operative to save those who receive they find salvation it powerfully works transforming them those who reject it it is useless for them it is foolishness for them yes even today we have people who mock jesus right and the message of the cross he couldn't save himself how will he save me yeah have you ever read all that have you, do you hear the hear people say that so we have a lot of mocking that happens now who are the ones who mocking because they are the ones who are perishing because for them it is foolishness this message is what foolishness so the market yes I've heard my friends say to me that hey, your Jesus was so weak he couldn't even protect himself from dying on the cross. And my point is, he was not even trying to protect himself, brother. <laughs> he was dying for you and me. With the brother's nostrils, he was destroyed everybody. Yes. But you see, there are people who just don't get this message, right? They mock the message. And Paul says, yes, yeah, some people are going to do that. So he has told that the word of the cross is foolishness to the ones who reject it. So they reject it, foolishness to them. But he says, but the ones who receive it, to them it's the power of God saving them, transforming them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you see this, and so what I find very amazing is that the Lord starts off with first help you to experience peace because they are all over the place and they are so scared and they're so anxious and so worried. So first thing, what does he do? He makes them rest in peace as their portion. Hallelujah. He says, "Say, hey, look at my hands, nail pierced hand. Look at my side. I have succeeded. I have paid the price for the cross. I have gone through punishment that you don't have to go through punishment with your forgiveness of your sin. Now, peace of God is your portion. Peace with God is the bundle of the peace of God. That's your portion. And then once he has put them to rest, what is he doing? He is encouraging them about purpose. And he is saying, 'Don't waste your life aimlessly wandering.'" as the father sent me i'm sending you with the message of reconciliation and i know you can't do it in your strength here i've been the holy spirit he was being the holy spirit upon them yes? yes and he's telling the importance of this message that they need to preach 
depending upon this message is so important because depending on the response to this message will determine how some will receive forgiveness of sin eternal life and some will receive judgment eternal damnation depending on how they respond to this message of the cross of Christ hallelujah and look at what we are told about what the Lord Jesus earlier also spoke to him about peace his peace and how much he values his own peace and how he thinks so precious for us so for example if you see John 14 27 John John 14 27 he says this, peace I leave with you, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you, don't let your hearts be troubled, no let your hearts be fearful, God is saying that hey, my peace is the antidote to all your fears, yes, even in the midst of tribulation and trouble you can walk in my peace, yes. Do not be troubled because of all the things that make you fearful, with all the things that make you distraught and troubled. My peace is the antidote. Hallelujah. It's very powerful. Look at John 16, 33. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. John 16, These things are spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. How do you have, to have peace in God? First, Peace with God has to happen because you have your faith in the finished work of the cross. That makes room for the peace of God to reign in your heart and mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, in me you have what? Peace. But in the world, what do you have? You have troubles. You have tribulations. But take courage. I have overcome the world. Take courage. I have overcome the world. In the world, you have tribulation. But in me, you have peace. Hallelujah. So we see how even before... His, you know, his death on the cross, he had spoken to them often about how powerful his peace is, hallelujah. And after the sense of Calvary, he's saying, look, this peace that I spoke to you so much about, it's become now a reality, a dynamic reality in your life now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, and then what happens is, that Thomas still hasn't believed, because Thomas wasn't, wasn't in the meeting that day. Yes, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said, unless I see, unless I see in his hands the imprints of the nails, and I put my finger into the place of his nails, and put my hand into his side where the Spirit passed through, I will not believe. So there will always be people who want signs and are not willing to believe just because of the message. Yes, or the witness. So after eight days, the disciples were again gathered and now Thomas is with them. Jesus came, again he, he appeared. Yeah, he didn't come to the door, but the door was already shut. He again came to the midst of them. What about amazing is the Lord loves to come in the midst of his people. Not on the side somewhere hiding and just watching, peeping me. He loves to come in the midst of our life to radically transform our life. Hallelujah. Have you seen children always want to be in the middle of the parents? Yes. All the time. Hello? Yes. You, think, you think the child sits in the corner on the chair where his parents are, are sitting, sitting together? He will jump right in the middle. <laughs> yes. Children always love to be in the midst of the proceedings, isn't it? And what I find fascinating with the Lord is He loves to be in the midst of His people. Because He's coming, that's best for us. It's in our midst that He changes us. Hallelujah. He's not waiting seven in the corner, peeping, looking. Should I come now? Should I speak to them? How will they take it? He doesn't think all that, right? He knows ah, His presence is for our good. Hallelujah. His nearness is for our good. So here again in the midst of them. And He doesn't bother about the door or anything. Because you see, the, the, the glorious body He has now, it's so glorious, doors can't stop Him. Yes, walls can't stop Him. Yes. And praise be to God, a day is coming when you and I are also going to be having a bodily resurrection and will be also given a glorious body. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the best part of the body is, we can see God in the fullness of His glory and not be burnt up. 
and enjoy him in his fullness hallelujah that's why the body is so important that will be given yes because right now the lord right now appeared in his fullness will all be burnt up yes i like what a, what a preacher used to say that a christian might not every day get out of his bed but he'll surely get out of his grave hallelujah sometimes a christian might not get out of his bed with a sickness or depression or he just demoralized but he will surely get out of his grave, grave. hallelujah get out of his grave there is interesting joke also about this you know how about the resurrection is is interesting joke where an american man you know he had gone to visit israel his wife died there so now his relatives asked are you going to bury her in israel or in us he said i can't take a risk in israel people rise up <laughs> you see so i'll bury her in us only yeah so if you are a believer what happens you might not rise from your bed but you rise from your grave for sure and we are also going to be given glorious resurrection bodies where you can worship in the fullness of the glory and not be burnt up hallelujah How amazing is that hallelujah hallelujah so Thomas is saying, "Look, I need to see the evidence for myself." And God is not really happy about this. But again, look at how gracious and patient the Lord Jesus is. He is going to also help doubting Thomas. Yeah, we call him doubting Thomas. He was a skeptic. I think skeptic is a better word than even doubting Thomas. He was he was being very skeptical about all this. So again, the Lord is there. And again, what's interesting is what does he say? The first thing, peace be with you. because we so much need the peace of jesus in the midst of all the troubles and tribulations and the fears hallelujah so again peace be with you and then the lord is pointedly speaking to thomas thomas reach here with your finger see my hands reach here your hand and put it on my side and do not be unbelieving but believe how amazing it is the lord so loves his people right he has appeared again when thomas also with them and he's helping thomas here And he is telling Thomas, Thomas, you wanted to check. Come, you can check. You can put your fingers. Check, check my nail pierced hand. You can check the side where the spear went to come. And don't be unbelieving person. We believe, yes. So many times we can be unbelieving believers, yes. And he said to Thomas, you know. And then Thomas answered and said, My Lord, my God. he realizes his mistake yes and it's a very interesting salutation now he's saying my lord and my god he's looking at the resurrected jesus and saying you know what you are god almighty hallelujah you are god almighty and for all those who say that jesus is only a good teacher or is a good person who okay? came he was a good guru i have news for you he was not just a guru or a good teacher jesus is god amen yeah he is god he is a part of the godhead he is a part of the this god is trinity is a trinity and uh, they have a wonderful relationship together and they have created us to involve us in their loving fellowship yes yes but jesus is not just a teacher not just a wise sage not just a sadhu but jesus is god himself and thomas finally recognizes and says you are god hallelujah hallelujah you are god my lord and my god and jesus said because you have seen me you have believed blessed are they who did not see but yet have believed hallelujah blessed are they who hear the message of the cross and they believe yes and we are those people hallelujah so blessed we are we have not seen the resurrected jesus but we have heard the message of the gospel and we have believed by the help of the holy spirit and blessed are we hallelujah as per the scriptures and then of course towards the end of this chapter we see john is saying many more signs jesus performed in the presence of the disciples but they are not written in this book but these are written so that you may believe that jesus is the christ the son of god 
and believing in him and believing you may have life in his name hallelujah so john is saying that you know jesus did so many great miracles but i have only recorded a few here these are signs pointing to greater reality look beyond the miracles to see the miracle worker the one behind the miracles this is the messiah this is the one in whom is eternal life you put your faith in him you will have eternal abundant life hallelujah and so and then of course we see the next chapter where uh, the lord again appears to certain people especially peter it is to peter and so the last two chapters if you read closely you will see that the lord is appears to many of the disciples and there's a lot of pastoral work is doing lord of restoring work is doing hallelujah and this should encourage us so much that the lord has such a big shepherd heart that he comes after us to strengthen us empower us restore us hallelujah and so as i close my sermon on this resurrection sunday celebration precious i want to encourage you doesn't matter how discouraged you feel how fearful you feel how confused you feel the lord your shepherd if you know him he is very much concerned for you he is going to come after you the way he came after the after the thomas and the peter hallelujah and he will restore you he will touch the broken places of your life hallelujah and if you don't know him this god is longing to have a relationship with you but he doesn't force himself on us that's why the bible says he is the one who gently knocks the door of our heart so perhaps you don't know the lord but hey may I, it's my prayer you will hear the gentle knock of jesus on your heart right now and you'll open your heart to him and he will walk into your heart and give you a bun eternal life hallelujah hallelujah and uh, as i close let me say this the bible says that the fact that jesus rose from the dead it shows he did not die for his sins he died for our sins because if he would not have risen from the dead that shows he died for his sins and then he can't help us but the fact that jesus even death could hold him and he rose on the third day it shows he did not die for his sins he died for our sins but death can hold a sinless man hallelujah and that is powerful and precious and if he has died on the cross for us hallelujah If he has taken the punishment, then what is our portion? It is forgiveness of sin. If he has tasted death on the cross for us, then what is our portion? His abundant eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. He has tasted shame on that cross for us, and so that we can walk in His glory. Hallelujah. And so these are precious things to celebrate. It's my prayer that God open eyes to see what did Jesus mean when He said it is finished on that cross. Yes. What did He mean? It is finished. He didn't say I am finished. He said it is finished. so many ways to look at it one way is i have finished making every provision for you to now reign in this life hallelujah i made every provision for you now to live a life of godliness to glorify me i have made every provision for you to live to reign in this life now over sin satan and death hallelujah okay great let's close our eyes and let's just please um reflect on the message any sermon you hear there are couple of things that we can always think about as we reflect so one of the things we can always as we reflect we can think about if there's anything in the sermon where you were encouraged about the character of god the ways of god you can praise and thank him if there's anything in the sermon where you were convicted by the holy spirit you can say sorry from the heart and the bible says if you confess your sins god is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness Another good thing to think about when you're sermon is what are one or two things I will pray differently or I will do differently or how will I apply this sermon? Because when the Lord speaks, He doesn't speak to inform; He speaks to transform. Let's also think as a church family: what are a few things we will do differently? The Word of God that has come to us, how we will apply this Word as a church family. So this is your time to you speak to the Lord. See
Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is risen from the dead. We worship you, we worship you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. says to the uttermost it is the Lord who can penetrate the deepest recess of your personhood and heal you it doesn't matter if it's a physical, mental or emotional trauma so right now you know what has been troubling you whether it's your it's a physical sickness whether it's a emotional issue, whether it's a mental trauma the Lord wants to heal, the Lord wants to touch how about you open up ourselves right now and say to him, Lord, please heal me. This trauma has been so much trouble in the mental trauma. That incident that happened, I just keep replaying it in my mind. 
will you please cleanse me wash me will you please take the sting out of that incident and free me from this mental trauma oh lord the sickness is again and again biting me would you lord give me decisive breakthrough from the sickness oh savior oh great redeemer the lord is in this place he is a great redeemer he has made a name for himself as the one who restores the broken places in our life whether it's a mental issue or emotional issue or a physical issue and he is the only one who can save to that the most so precious right now bring that broken place to the lord and say lord you are the god who saves to that the most you are the god who is my great redeemer you are the god who cares so here touch and heal sometimes you know we can be so broken we don't even know we can't even put a finger on what has broken us so much and sometimes it just helps to say lord i don't know i can't even put a finger on what has beaten me so much but something has broken and i know you are the one who can put me back together so come and put me back together my son no and the way only you can and this god responds to the cries of his people in isaiah we are told that at the sound of your cry at the sound of your cry he will hear you and deliver you at the sound of your cry so precious ones how about we cry and offer him the broken place of our life and say oh redeemer touch heal make whole he's here he's moving he's healing he's restoring let him help you please this is a god who says to the uttermost this is a living god the risen savior the one who deeply cares for us the way he deeply cared for the thomas that deeply cared for that peter he cares for you Maybe you're a person who feels that you've not done well in your journey with the Lord. That's how Peter was feeling at that time. But the resurrected Jesus went and restored Peter. Restored Peter. Strengthened Peter to pursue his purpose. And right now that God is here to take off this aroma of defeat and discouragement. so we can say this so oh god if you are feeling that you have wasted years and you've not taken him seriously you've not been a person who has been committed to your kingdom purpose you can right now say to him lord forgive me cleanse me and strengthen me lord give me fresh of the holy spirit that i would be a person who would be an effective witness of this life and so be effective in the kingdom purpose you can rededicate yourself right now and his purpose the lord wants to use each one of us for his glory each one hallelujah 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 oh we give you praise we give you thanks we give you glory the one who restored peter back to his purpose is here and so willing to restore us back to our kingdom purpose. If you lost your way, we can go back to right now. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Oh we acknowledge justified by faith we have peace with God and we acknowledge the peace with God has opened up the peace of God Oh we thank you We acknowledge shalom is a portion of all manner of holiness and blessings a portion And we acknowledge and we are grateful for the gift of salvation this rich gift of salvation that has come to us because you succeeded on Calvary and we are grateful Now help us Lord to rededicate ourselves that we would live a life that's worthy of the cross that we would be those who are zealous for your kingdom purpose for our life 
And the Lord God awaken us to see it's not in our strength but it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Lord now I pray Father that you give a fresh power of the Holy Spirit to the ones who have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and those who don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit I pray right now you will give the baptism of the Holy Spirit Lord. release to us the empowering that only comes because the fullness of the holy spirit work in our lives and lord we know even for the disciples you breathed the holy spirit on them and then it was at the day of pentecost that the holy spirit came on his fullness upon these people and in them and mighty things happened so father it's my prayer that we would experience the fullness of the holy spirit at work in and through us and the lord god we would be we would become effective witnesses of this gospel effective witness of the life of god pointing many to the eternal life in christ pointing many to the hope in christ oh we give you praise we give you thanks we give you glory we give you honor also i have a impression that i wanted to share there is there is one or more people here and this is what god wants to say to you that he has he will help with ignorance but he hates rebellion ignorance is when you don't know the ways of god and you are disobeying and god sends teaching for the ignorant but when you have the teaching and you know the right thing to do and you still don't do it because it's more convenient for the flesh to do your own will it so grieves his heart and there are there is one or more than one people here you have been willfully doing your own thing though you know it's wrong though you know it's not the way of god and god calls it rebellion so let go of your rebellion and yield and good will come to you oh the world lies to us that the ways of the world are better now the ways of the lord are much better always Oh his ways are enduring his ways are full of life his ways give life and health and wholeness so to the one who's the one among people who's doing your own thing though you know it is wrong and it's not ignorance what you're doing is rebellion let go of your rebellion yield to the way of god in the matter and good will come to you In Job we see God says yield now be at peace with me that my good will come to you. God wants to do his good. Let's yield. Oh precious ones where there's ignorance God will send teaching. But where there's rebellion God will send discipline. So many of us know the right thing to do and we still don't do it many times. And that's rebellion in the side. And the answer is not will power the answer is to learn to follow the Holy Spirit. Now oh, may the Lord help us to grow in the obedience of faith an obedience that is being stirred up by my faith in Christ because I'm growing strong in my faith journey there's a measure of faith given to each believer but there's also you grow because faith also comes by hearing and hearing the word but you also grow in a measure of faith that, that is given to you. each one is going to measure of faith but we also grow in our faith journey faith also comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So Lord is my prayer that there would be cleansing and that we would grow in obedience, obedience of faith, obedience by the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and that you be glorified. I commend your precious people to you Lord. which will build them up and give them the inheritance in the sanctified i so bless this precious one i just speak all manner of holiness and blessing upon them go make us a people marked by joy lord because your joy is our strength we ask you to thank you jesus in the love of the father the grace of our lord jesus christ and the sweet communion of the holy spirit with all of us now and forever